Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here and this is part 5 of the course on building products with JavaScript where we build an Electron app. So last time we talked about building a Crunchyroll source when using the YouTube DL uh, for scraping it. Uh, and you know, for the most part we actually finished it and we was actually able to stream the videos and if we look at the commits history that uh, we'll see that you know we navigate the series, we streamed everything. And uh, during the last live streams, um, I did a few things. First of all, I replaced the YouTube DL with a plain JavaScript code for Crunchyroll. So we're going to have a look at that in a bit more detail right now. Um, then I added a settings page and a way to log in into Crunchyroll that is uh, very specific to Electron.js and allows us to actually bypass the Crunchyroll uh, bot protection that they have from uh, Cloudflare, I believe, that requires JavaScript to run. So normally with a normal uh, command like node scrapers or whatever, server-side scrapers, actually quite hard to do that or it requires special workarounds, let's put it this way. With Electron, it's really easy. Uh, so we added the bookmarks page and added a way to load the remote bookmarks from Crunchyroll. And then there was some more basic stuff like search and uh, additional code polishing that I did off the streams, which is not as interesting. So let's go one by one. First, let's talk about replacing um, YouTube DL with a plain JavaScript. So um, if you watched live streams, you know, I, I kind of struggled with that, but um, finding out how to get the video URLs wasn't too hard. So they use this um, RPC API for video player. Uh, which is then called by the Flash player itself. And you can easily see that in the um, um, Chrome DevTools. So it wasn't quite trivial to get that. It's just XML. So we use the, the XML parser to get the object back and then, you know, re load required parameters. And then we get the stream info, file info, subtitles info. The file, like the stream info comes in um, M3U playlist, which contains multiple links. So we just get the latest one, which I, I believe it should be the best pick for you. Uh, and then the subtitles is a tricky bit here. So the thing is that uh, Crunchyroll doesn't actually let you get subtitles in uh, plain string format or ASS, SRT, wherever. So what they do is, I guess this can be considered a DRM they use. Um, or protection from piracy, whatever it's anyway, it's not, it's not easy to get them, but it is possible, right? YouTube DL already does this. So basically, could we, uh, I struggled a bit on, with it on a stream because uh, what you get from the subtitles is essentially this three variables. So you get the subtitles data, which is actually the subtitles themselves, but they are encoded using AES encryption. And then they gzipped and there's like a bunch of other things going on. And then you get the subtitles ID and subtitles IV, which are used to build the key that is used to decode this stuff. So the thing is that YouTube DL obviously has the source code for that, that decodes all of that thing, but it's in Python. And I was like struggling a bit to properly convert it to JavaScript. But then I remembered, you know, we're living in an age of open source and hey, there must be a JavaScript library that already did that. And well, I guess correct. There is, um, let me open that. There is um, a crunchyroll.js from a user death spike on GitHub, which is um, licensed under MIT, which does exactly this. So I did a bit of digging and this is yet another case of, you know, don't reinvent the wheel, just go search for something. You most likely find it these days. Um, so it uses, as you can see, the default node Krypton uh, module. It uses big integer module and Zlib to unpack it all. And yeah, as you can see here, it's encrypted with AES uh, 256 CBC. And if you're interested, feel free to look. So this is basically the library itself is in TypeScript and uses callbacks uh, all around. So I had to like convert it to plain JavaScript and promises so I can evade it actually without doing all the callbacks. But it's more or less just a simple uh, mathematics with integers that does like SOAR multiplications. And I don't actually think it does anything else. It's just basically XOR multiply, then you get the uh, key. Um, and yeah, you use that key basically to decipher it. And then you throw it into the um, de decompress function, which essentially is uh, Zlib inflate. And that's it, you get your subtitles. But the trick is that's actually not the uh, formatted subtitles. So it's just a bunch of strings and you need another thing that actually takes that 
and converts that to ASS. And this is what the other bit does. So again, this is from the same library. Um, thanks to the user desk spike for doing all of that. It's licensed under MIT, the same as this project. So I, uh, there should not be any um, problems with licensing here. Uh, and as you can see here uh, that there's a bunch of functions. So first of all, there is the script function. This is the header that it creates. Uh, so it again, the, the stuff you get back from the decrypt function is XML. So it's parsed here as XML again. And then it just transforms this XML object. Uh, so it has the styles and events properties, which convert accordingly to styles and events is the actual subtitles here. So you actually get the ASS subtitles. Now, the, the cool thing about this is that we don't actually have to um, download those subtitles, save anywhere and do anything like this. So what, what I did here is um, I used, so wait a second, where is it? Um, give me a sec. There we go. So what I did is I extracted the subtitles uh, text, right? So I convert those bytes that I decrypted to ASS subtitles. And then I create a um, blob from it. So, uh, and from blob, I can create an object URL, which I just pass to the player. And whenever a fetch is executed on the blob URL, the data will be immediately returned to it. So even though it is a URL, it already contains the old data. So we don't actually need to save anything to the hard drive. And it works perfectly fine. So, you know, this is, it took me way longer than it should have been actually because I didn't try to search it in the first place. That was my stupid mistake. But um, in the end, we now do not need YouTube DL dependency. And in fact, we're doing everything in JavaScript, which is great. Um, so the next thing we did is authentication. So to get basically it's a requirements for get my series function, which gets your bookmarks from there. But to do that, we actually need to log in, right? So the thing is, um, uh, is to log in into Crunchyroll, so if I, let me try, I don't know if that will actually work, but we're gonna give it a shot. Sometimes they, no, okay, this doesn't. Uh, let me try maybe in Safari. Sometimes they have this um, crunchyroll.com, the, the, the Cloudflare DDoS protection that pops up as a JavaScript. And uh, now that doesn't seem to be, Okay, whatever. So, but maybe you've seen that on some other website. It's basically a screen that says, uh, like, please wait five seconds. It's a DDoS protection, whatever. And the thing is that if you try to load that in uh, your um, scraper or whatever, using just the backend, you, it will be quite hard to parse it, right? And to go around it. So what I did is um, I actually created the settings page where, you, where we have the Crunchyroll settings card, which is well on the login button right now. And the cool part is that it's actually drawn by the plugin itself. So as you can see here, we have the draw settings method that is uh, just drawing this button. Okay, the card itself, but it's mostly the button right now. And once we press the button, it creates a new window, which actually navigates to Crunchyroll. So the thing is that right now I'm already logged in to Crunchyroll, so it will just like load and close because I'm already logged in. But if you are not logged in, you will actually see the login page. And you will, you know, it's it's kind of works like Oath because user logs in into Crunchyroll directly and we don't really save any password. And all we do is we uh, take whatever the cookies are set from the Crunchyroll domain and store them in our uh, database, right? And then we just use those cookies to sign the requests or to add them to requests that we are sending. For example, get my series request, right? So if I click on that now after logging in, um, there's something a bit broken, but okay. As you can see here, it's actually loaded all my series and episodes that I watched. So I can actually continue watching right from here, which is great. Um, let me close that. And um, yeah, I think that's basically that covers everything that was done in the live streams. I mean, I did a bit more stuff. So I, I did this await is inited. Basically, the idea is that there is a neat method now that tries to load cookies from the database if you were prior uh, logged in before, right. And the thing is that we don't want to send any requests before those cookies are loaded. And this operation is a sync. So what I did is I created a promise uh, from trigger of this function. And every other function like get all series, get episodes, get my stuff, get uh, episodes, co content starts with this await this init. Uh, so as you know, promise resolves only one. So once this init function is finished, this always will resolve immediately. And since it just waits for it, 
it takes like basically it, it happens immediately right so even the database trigger it's like it's pretty much much instantaneous but since we don't want to have any race conditions or any i mean it's not really race conditions here but more like we don't want to try to get the my episodes before logging in this is why it's important to have that um other than that i don't think there's actually anything to tell here uh so regards to the um poll that i ran last time seems like most of people are interested in multiple sources so we're kind of done with almost done with crunchyroll here uh there's like one thing so we're loading the my stuff now um was it called uh no the get episodes it was like get my get my um where the hell is it get my series there we go and the thing is that format here is a bit strange so it's not sort of series and episodes the same way as we see them before but it's sort of mixed because you have like episode title episode url episode image description and then you have only series title and url without other metadata so i'm still thinking on you know the best way to match it to the current database maybe i need to load the series data that are missing from there or something among those lines so this is kind of still a uh, concept still work in progress but it kind of it works right now right so um, this is something I'm going to be thinking about a bit during this week, I guess, and then maybe fix it in live stream at some point. And then we're going to start with another input, which I guess is going to be YouTube or something among those lines. And I'm going to show you how to handle multiple inputs and how to uh, sort of bring the results of multiple sources into one nice UI. Well, I mean, maybe not so nice at this stage, but, you know, one working UI, let's put it this way. Um, yeah, I guess that will be it for this episode. Thank you for watching. And as usually, I see you next time. Bye.